the story of our local North American river otters begins high on Mount Diablo itself. The headwaters of so many of our creeks begin on the mountain and flow into a vast network of riparian zones that make up the watershed below and around the mountain. While water is life for all of us, for the river otter, it's also an aquatic highway. Capable of swimming faster than we humans can run, they're also known to travel many miles in a single day through our freshwater creeks, canals, rivers, even our bays and ocean shorelines. River otters are always in search of an abundant food supply and access to clean water. At the top of this aquatic ecosystem, river otters are bioindicators of the ecological health of these essential arteries in our precious watersheds. A member of the weasel family, river otters make use of favorite resting spots like this one and move into existing burrows or holts above the water's edge, where females give birth in February through April to pups, usually one to three, but sometimes as many as six. They'll open their eyes after about a month, and within five to six weeks, they're ready to play with their siblings. Reaching their maximum size at three to four years of age at between 10 to 30 pounds, they're still much smaller than their sea otter cousins, who can weigh up to 70 pounds. Family units are common, and pups are playful, chasing, wrestling, grooming, and cleaning each other as they learn survival skills from mom, and sometimes also from other female helper members of the group. tapered head the size of their neck, with tiny ears and eyes, short, powerful legs, with webbed toes, a compact body, and a thick tapered tail make them well suited to their aquatic environment. River otters' nostrils and ears will close while they're underwater, and their eyes' nictitating membrane can also close while swimming. One of the most remarkable things about river otters is their incredibly dense fur, with three to four hundred thousand follicles per square inch. This dense fur will trap air, and as the river otter swims submerged, often for several minutes at a time, the air will release itself, creating a bubble line in the water that's often mistaken for a released breath. Since river otters can swim underwater for up to four football fields in length, a bubble line may be your only indicator that they're near. Naturally curious, river otters will often come close to check us out, using their acute hearing, vision, and sense of smell. When hunting, to satisfy their need to consume about 15% of their body weight per day, They'll use their sensitive paws and long whiskers to detect prey, especially in darker waters. Sharp front teeth help catch and hold on to their food, while the molars are particularly well suited for crushing shells and bone. While fish and crawdad are their favorites, otters are opportunistic feeders and will dine on frogs, turtles, salamanders, occasionally animals like squirrels and birds, even fruit and insects. Larger prey like the striped bass are taken onto land. Unregulated trapping, pollution, and habitat loss have affected many river otter populations to the point that in the early 1900s, they had declined or disappeared from many of their historic ranges. 
natural resource and conservation management efforts, largely beginning in the 1970s, have returned the river otter's conservation status to species of least concern. River otters face few predators in the water, but on land, they're at risk from larger carnivores such as coyote and bobcat. That said, most river otter mortality is still caused by humans. Have you noticed that when we come upon these amazing and wonderful creatures, that they never fail to bring a smile to our faces? An appropriate response, as their presence tells us that just maybe doing something right.